So I am back with a new video. This video, guys, will be kind of unique. I'm going to be speaking about integrating FortiGate Firewall with Google Cloud. Okay. Now, why, you, why would you want to integrate an existing firewall you have with Google Cloud? I mean, consider this tutorial as tutorial for FortiGate Firewall and tutorial for Google Cloud as well. We're going to be exploring many aspects of these two platforms. But first, let's explain why would you integrate a fi uh, firewall like FortiGate with Google Cloud. Now, you may be hosting your websites, your projects, your applications in Google, in Google uh, Cloud. Like, for example, here, I did a VM instance. Okay, it's like, you know, test instance that opens a basic WordPress uh, page. Now, if I want my FortiGate to integrate with this instance in a way that I can apply firewall policies to this instance so that my firewall FortiGate will not only protect my internal network, it will be, all, it will be also protecting my online assets such, such as Google Cloud projects. All right. Now, let's say you have a VM instance here, which is a WordPress website, right? So you want to apply certain firewall policies specifically to protect your WordPress instance from external attacks. Now, what would, would you do? First, you would go to Fabric Connectors. First step is integrating Google Cloud. Next, you create a new and you select Google Cloud Platform. Now it asks you basic information, the name, project name, service account, email, and a private key. Now, how would you get this information? So let's go back to Google Cloud. We go to um, Home, and now we go to Project Settings. Okay, the first piece of information you would grab is the name. This is not this name, it is the project ID. So you copy that, and you go back as a project name, okay? Now, where would you get the service account, email, and private key? So we go to service accounts, and we click on that. Let me delete this existing key. Or let me click on edit, delete. Okay, in order to obtain the service account, email, and private key, you need to create key over here. Download, create. It's going to download, right? I'm not going to download because I have already done that. Cancel, close. Okay, let me let me open this. So basically, I know it contains this information. I shouldn't be showing these, but no problem. So you take the um, where what was that? The project ID. We put it as the name and the service account email. You, you grab this from here, and you go back. Let's say I take this, and we go back. We look at the private key. Now, the private key, guys, you need to copy all of that starting from here, not including the backslash N. You copy that and you paste it into a separate um, line over here. So, you, you want to format the private key in three lines. First, the beginning. In the middle is the key. Third is the end of the key. You copy that. And you click on OK. You, you're good to go. You put a descriptive name and all is good. I'm going to click on Cancel since I have already done that. Now, what's the next step? Next step, as I can see here, you will, be, you will, you will have the public uh, SDN and USB connector will be up. If you have done everything correctly, you will get this uh, plugin as up and running. Now, the next step is what would you do with this? You go to addresses, and from addresses, you create a new address. So in this step, guys, you want FortiGate Firewall to pop all of the IP addresses of the existing instances you have on this project in Google Cloud. So let's say you have demo website running as a project, demo website. And here you put the type as fabric connector address. 
SDN connector, you have only one. And here you select, you will see all of the instances. Here are the IDs of the instances, right? And here you will see the name of the instances. And you scroll down, you see the tags, region. Now what would you want to do, guys, is to filter using the ID of the instances. So you select this one, for example. And this, I mean, this one corresponds to an instance running on your Google Cloud, running on your project in Google Cloud, okay? Now, after we click on OK, I'm going to click on Cancel, and after we click on OK, you should see the IP address of the instance whose ID is this one. Let's click on Cancel, and I have this. I name it as this one. And if I hover over it, I can see the IP address to the instance I am integrating with Fortigate. Okay, now you configured Fortigate with Google Cloud. Then you created the IP addresses of the instances you to which you want to apply the Fortigate policies or security policies. The third step is creating the actual policies or creating an IPv4 policy to deal with these addresses. Let's go to IPv4, and we create a new one, name, GCB, uh, GCB, let's say, demo website. Becoming interface, it doesn't matter, but don't put it as LAN. I prefer one to one. The source, whatsoever, we click on all, since we are protecting, since we are dealing with the traffic coming to our project in Google Cloud. The destination would be the, uh, the address you have just created, which is this one, okay? Now the service, we select all of the relevant services, okay, that might be receiving traffic on your Google Cloud, which is the project, right? So in case it's a web server, you would want to select HTTP and HTTPS. In case you have SSH open, which is the case in Google Cloud, you would want also to scan SSH connections. So we go to SSH. Okay. Now, everything as it is, and we go down to security profiles. Now, of course, you want to enable the IPS. All right. Now, the IPS, you have many policies. I prefer the protect HTTP server. Now this policy is tailored in a way to protect against server-side vulnerabilities plus server-side attacks, okay? So you click on, let me select no inspection, and we click on okay. Since I have done this before, I'm gonna click on cancel. And let's go now explain what are the security profile that you can apply to these policies. So let me go to security profiles. Uh, intrusion prevention, and here, protect HTTP server, we click on edit. Very good. Now, here you add the IPS filters, okay, that you want the Fortigate to use as a criteria in filtering connections to your um, project in Google Cloud. For example, here I want to protect against all server-side vulnerabilities on HTTP, HTTPS, also when the application is Apache and the system is Linux. You can select these by adding filters. Let's say, for example, you want to protect against server-side FTP vulnerabilities. So you click Add Filter. You select the uh, protocol is FTP, FTPS, and don't forget to select the target as server. Now here, Fortigate lists all of the current signatures or the filters it has on its database uh, from which it would learn how to protect your um, server on Google Cloud. All right. You click on Use Folders and you're all done. So that's how you integrate Google Cloud, your Google Cloud projects, websites, application with FortiGate firewall, even if the FortiGate is local. My FortiGate here is local, guys. But it has a static IP address on the web. 
Now, the alternative solution to that is to deploy a VM instance in as a 40 gate. So the alternative solution, guys, to go to marketplace. And if you don't have a 40 gate on site, we can use uh, existing images in Google Cloud. So you click on 40, 40 net. And here you see existing virtual machines that can be used as firewalls. And you can do the same, the same settings that I have just shown you guys in these instances. They are, they are no different. So you select one for your application firewall. And don't forget that you need to pay a monthly fee. In this case, $27. And you need to put your license. So this won't work if you don't have a license. OK. So what else do we need to talk about? So we talked about everything here. Now the question is, the question is at the following. Suppose that you want to protect from client-side vulnerabilities, right? So client-side vulnerabilities like um, JavaScript, uh, let's say, XSS attack, reflected XSS attack. So here is a protect protected client. And here I can see, I didn't check that. But for protecting these kind of attacks, you can use um, WordPress as a plugin to WordPress if you are using WordPress. So if I click on targets, no, it's not going to be this. Let's explore the client side. Application is. My SQL. And we can see all the filters. I don't think you I don't think you need to use that. If I click on server. I hate this interface. Okay. So here are the filters. Supposedly for SQL, uh, I'm not sure of this. If you click on use filters, let's explore. Let's add another filter. Let's say um, the severity would be critical. And the OS would be Linux. And the protocol is let me select uh, ECB. So I would see here all the filters that have to do with that. I don't think you need to use the client one. You're, you're okay to use the the uh, the server, the server side. All right. I hope this was somewhat helpful, and see you guys in the next video.